Hi everyone, I just got back from an afternoon kayaking on the lake and it was such a beautiful day that I thought I would continue filming out here. So if you hear some birds slash my cat slash see my family members walking around behind me, don't panic, I'm just here enjoying the sunshine. So Medium very slyly released a total revamp of one of their oldest features and it is tags. The tags page looks completely different. And there's so many interesting things. The fact that they didn't widely announce it, the fact that they've done it at all, the way that they redesigned it to include new information, um, the fact that they haven't changed the topics page, which is different. So this video is going to get into what the new tags page is, how it can be used by writers because it has so much interesting and useful, actionable information that you can be using to reach your readers. And as always, my favorite section, what this means for Medium and by extension for you as a writer in the future. Okay, let's dive in. So tags used to look a little bit like this. So I took this page from a blog post uh, published by Tom Kugler, but now they look like this. You're medium.com forward slash tag forward slash, um, I'll do productivity because why not? So you can see immediately it's been totally reworked with a lot of interesting information, okay? So this is the tags page. You might be wondering what a tag is and how it differs from topics, which I have talked about a lot. So if you've seen this, um, if you've seen this, you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that I talk about the topic pages, which are right here. So a topic page basically is when you publish a story on Medium, a Medium curator will read it and they'll say, hey, this is pretty good. We're going to curate it to not just people who follow you, not just people who follow the publication, but people who are interested in this topic that I think your story fits in really well to. And they look at this topic page uh, here. So you can see this has you know, tons of different topics. I think there are about 100. So you can get a story distributed into one or more topic. Tags are totally different. Tags are user assigned. So what I mean by that is I type in here, I tell a story, tell a story, um, and I here, and I hit publish. I add my own tags here. So they're totally, you see what I mean about the background noise? They're totally um, controlled by the author. Okay, so I can add whatever tag I want. Cat, uh, dog, food, writing, sunshine, something like that. Just the things that are on my mind right now. <laughs> um, so these are all, these. if I publish this non-existent story, it'll show up, I guess, on the new tag pages. So let's go back to those tag pages, because now hopefully you should understand that a topic page is curated by Medium staff. A tag page is user assigned content. It's the same as like hashtags on Instagram or on Twitter. So you should think about them the same way. Now I want to get into how you can use them. So let's go back to the productivity tag page and I'll show you exactly what's going on because it's a lot. There are a couple crucial areas that you should really be keeping in mind here. So number one, here you see stories and writers. Now there's, I mean, he, just this alone is so valuable to know because you can see immediately, I'm guessing this is since the inception of Medium, um, there have been 184 stories tagged productivity uh, written by 77 writers. So on average, in Medium's lifetime, um, every author has written two and a half stories in productivity. Okay, and you can see how if we go to relationships, for example, uh, if I spell relationships correctly, that tag changes. Uh, it's, it's closer to three stories rather than two and a half. So you can kind of get a sense for the competition levels caveat here, you know, this is since the inception of Medium, so there are, like, there probably aren't 73,000 active writers today. I don't think there are nearly that many, but this is a sense. This gives you an idea, okay? So that's number one. Number two, related to. This, I'm going to tell you this is going to matter a lot more in the later section that we're about to get to, like what this means for Medium in the future. But basically, this is showing us how Medium's algorithm is going to take into account stories that are related to each other. So if something is tagged relationships and Medium's algorithm knows that somebody really enjoys reading, I don't know, love and mental health, it might show them a story tagged relationship. And I, I do think we're going to get it. I'm kind of giving the game away here, but I do think that the algorithm is going to take tags more into consideration. Um, okay, the other thing, 
you can see top writers. So we already had that information, but it's good to see here, like, um, I mean, I have no idea what order these are in. There used to be 50, I think there still are. So there are 50 top writers. I'm assuming these are in order, and the reason I'm assuming they're in order is because when I go to pets, um, I'm top of the list. <laughs> and I think I'm one of the few people who writes consistently in pets with a big following, so I think these are in like order of popularity, like the topest writers. Um, so you know, hopefully, you'll know where you stand in that list uh, of your top writership, which is really, really cool. Okay, so that's the right-hand side. Um, this is all interesting, it's valuable, but the left-hand side of the page, that's where all of the actionable information is, okay? So on Medium, um, you yeah, you want to write a story. You, you should always keep your own desires in mind when you're writing a story. You want to write for yourself. You want to write for things that you have a real passion, interest, knowledge in. But if you want to make money writing, as most of us do, no shame in that, um, you want to know what your audience wants to. So what I used to do is I used to go to um, publications to see what was trending in the publication. So for example, if we go to PS I Love You um, and we add latest to the URL like that, this shows us latest stories and it also shows us the trending stories. So PS I Love You for example, you might think, oh, okay, they take fiction. I bet the PS I Love You people, the readers of PS I Love You love fiction. You can go to trending and see, um, in fact, fiction doesn't really show up a lot in the top few stories. This isn't, this isn't what they really want there. So that's how I used to do it. But now we have a whole new avenue of information open to us. Um, tags, relationships. Let's go into the relationships tags. This shows us, out of all the stories tagged relationships, which ones are popular. So popular, here I'm just taking to mean trending. I mean, right now I'm seeing a lot of sort of sexual stuff in the relationships angle, so maybe that's something that you should consider. Today's relationships audience wants maybe more of a sexual angle in your stories. Something to think about. Um, don't use AI to write that, as I learned from my last video. <laughs> but the popular section here, that's not even where it gets started. We have so much more information. We have the latest tag as well. And this is what I'm planning on using. I'm, God, I'm currently in the middle of wrestling with a uh, Python Selenium script to scrape this and see um, if I can get some useful data from this. But you can use this to get an idea of how often people are publishing in this tag and what your competition level is on a little more of a higher level than um, the stories to, re to writers ratio that we saw earlier. So for example, we can scroll here. One. Okay, so I've scrolled down at least 50 stories and there were at least that many published today, possibly more. Um, so competition, probably quite high in the relationships tag. Um, you can also go to top. So this is really good because you can slice down by sort of time. Um, so I would say all time is a really useless time slice because these were written on a sort of different medium almost. Like you just don't see things getting 97,000 claps anymore because competition is a lot stiffer. I think this week is too limiting. Um, there's nothing really there to see, but you, I think that this month and this year are probably your best time slice options to actually find out what is performing really well, not just trending at the very moment, but like what an author or what, what a publication or what a readers from that topic are looking for today. I'll give you one takeaway I've just got from this. I thought relationships readers would only be interested in romantic relationships, but half of these are about relationships like platonically. Like here's a work one, Michael Thompson's. Um, here's another work one from Business Insider. And here's another friend one, Reducing Loneliness. So that's, that's super interesting and super valuable. Um, let's look at career. And, spoiler alert, I know what I'm gonna find here, but it surprised me and I think it'll surprise you too. Let's look at them from this month. Um, see if you notice any trends here. I won't say anything, I'll just scroll quietly for a second. Okay, I'll stop. Um, hopefully you've noticed the trend. It's data science, everything. So in the last month, um, if we compare that to this year, it changes a little bit. So, I mean, there's some more generic, another great one from Michael, some more generic 
MISC work ones, um, but a lot of data science stuff in the careers tag. And that tells me probably that a lot of the um, readers looking at career stuff on Medium are data scientists. That's interesting. That's valuable for you to know as a writer. So, I mean, I think every single piece of information on this on this article, or this, this page is, sorry, that's my cat, um, is absolutely so valuable for you as a writer trying to understand your audience on Medium. Um, and now, once you know, now that you know how to use it, I want to start talking about what you should do with this information moving forward, like how you should consider Medium. I want to be clear. Um, I think Medium is going to do away with curation entirely, and there are a couple of reasons why. First of all, um, there's something called auto curation, and this is something that I noticed happening that stories that are against Medium's curation rules are um, still getting curated. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's just a glitch. You know, mistakes happen to everyone, but um, I'm going to show you what I mean because um, I want to demonstrate this really explicitly. If we look at... Um, something like this that was published today, it has Medium in it, and we know stories about Medium are not allowed, just as an example. Here's another one. This is a classic example of something that shouldn't have been curated, but evidently was. Not that the article is bad, Medium just doesn't curate topics or articles about Medium. Um, and it was happening quickly enough that it meant that it was automated, like somebody wasn't going through that and making a mistake. Sanjem Singh has auto curation enabled on his profile somehow. I don't know how Medium determined who would get auto curation and who wouldn't. I assume that there's some kind of quality control where, you know, if you passed a manual check, 75% or above, you got the automated curation enabled. Um, but I think that they're probably going to fire all their curators if they haven't already. And they're either, they're going to rely on a sort of um, automated curation type thing where readers who achieve or have achieved X amount of curation in the past will have it going forward. Um, or something like the tags page that are obviously, this is what Medium's revamped. This is where they've put in a ton of effort, money, development hours. This is what they're looking at right now. This is what they're developing. Um, and I think that's because topics and the curation into topics isn't gonna matter so much anymore. And in fact, if we look at their latest email, um, under the section where it slyly announces the uh, topic slash tag page revamp, it also says that we're gonna expect the homepage to be much more relational, much more about um, much more about following and follower and the network of tags and topics that the reader has shown they're interested in, not based on a medium enabled topic, but on the author enabled tag. Curation is going to matter less, if anything. It's going to be much more about the tags that you use. Um, and I think, I don't know how, but followers are going to become much more interesting, um, much more important to authors too. So I think like the who to follow is probably something that's going to be a lot more powerful. Let's say that somebody follows, I don't know, me, Zuli, and I write a lot about my cats. And there's a new up and coming author who writes about cats. Um, it might show this newer author to some of my audience and say, hey, you know, you like Zuli, you like her cat stuff, here's some other cat stuff by a newer author and see if if that link could be made. And I think this is this is part of what Medium is envisioning as more of a relational medium. So how you should change, if you are using tags thoughtlessly, as I have suggested you do for the past two years, um, I would say start putting a little bit more thought to make sure that you are reaching the correct audience. And Medium's given you a tool to do that, right? The tag page. So if you take 10 minutes at the end of each story and go to the tags page and see, you know, in the latest or the top for this month, see if, if the tag is reaching the right audience, um, the audience that's going to be most interested in the topic that you have to write about, or the tag. God, I'm, I'm getting myself confused. Um, make sure you do that. Uh, maybe find out if you do have auto curation. You can do this, I think, if you just publish something not in a publication um, and see if you get automatically distributed. Go to your story stats and see if it says, like, distributed in topics X, Y, Z or whatever. Um, that's probably how you can find out if you're on this vaunted list. And other than that, yeah, just hold steady. Um, who knows what Medium is doing? Curation is going to matter less. Topics that are author assigned are going to matter more. 
and we have new tools to research what our audience is interested in. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think this is fair? Do you think this is unfair? How do you think this is going to affect newer authors, older authors? Um, are you glad about curation going away? I think a lot of people thought of it as this sort of unfair gateway to success that sometimes they just weren't able to reach and now that's gone. So what do you think? Or It might not be gone yet, but I think it will soon be gone. And I'm excited to see what's gonna happen as a result of that. Uh, I'm a little nervous about the following thing, especially for newer authors. I don't know how Medium's gonna take care of the discovery angle. I'm sure that they will. I'm just interested to see how. So without further ado, I will leave you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, I'm excited to hear your thoughts and I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you navigate how Medium grows, changes, does all kinds of wild stuff that we can't control. Um, yeah. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see you all on Friday. Bye everyone.